Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Thought Center of Hawaii, the Sunday service for February 13th. My name is Pasha. I'm facilitating and uh, we have with us today our guest speaker, Susan Bambara, and a pair of wonderful musicians, Mahina and Christy. And they're going to start us off today. Aloha. I think this song just says it all. <laughs> Welcome to my morning, welcome to my day, oh yes, I'm the one responsible, I made it just this way, to paint myself some pictures, see what they might bring, I think I made it perfectly, I wouldn't change a thing. La 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 Welcome to my happiness, you know it makes me smile, and it pleases me to have you here for just a little while, while we open up the spaces, try and break some chains, and if the truth is told, they will never come again. La 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 Welcome to my evening, the closing of the day. I could try a million times and never find a better way to tell you that I love you and all the songs I play. Thank you for allowing me in the lovely day you made. La la la. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. Welcome to my morning. Welcome to my day, oh yes, I'm the one responsible, I made it just this way, to make myself some pictures, see what they might bring, I think I made it perfectly, I wouldn't change a thing, la la la. La 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 Thank you, Mahina and Christy. Appreciate that. That was a beautiful song. Thank you so much. I'm going to be reading this morning from the Science of Mind magazine. And today's reading is titled, You Are the Divine in Genes. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come to be alive. And that's written by Howard Thurman. He is in all, for he is all, 
It is through love his presence is revealed. And that was written by Ernest Holmes from The Voice Celestial. When you figure out what you're passionate about, you won't hit the snooze button anymore. Your soul assignment is not only divinely assigned, but you have to engage in it here in this dimension. You are the divine in genes, answering the call to action, finding something to love and live for. If you have a clear calling, you don't have to force yourself into action. Your passion will drive you. There may be twists, turns, and sometimes even a U-turn that will be the most direct route to your destination, but you'll be in love with your journey. The greatest gift you can give yourself is to honor your soul's purpose. It's why you were born. It's what makes you come alive. It's what brings forth your latent strengths and higher qualities. Rumi wrote, let the beauty of what you love be what you do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. And here's the affirmation. Please repeat after me. I find what makes me come alive. I find what makes me come alive. And I live that passion. And I live that passion. Thank you. Thank and now it's you. time. It's, it's, uh, that was wonderful. Just, it, it's funny the way it always turns out just right. So this is Pasha again, and I'm um, co-facilitating with Annie this morning. Um, and the next thing is uh, oh, I, an opening prayer. Um, as probably most of you know, um, Thich Nhat Hanh made his transition fairly recently. Um, and I'd like to share a prayer meditation that... Um, three different friends sent me shortly after his passing. It's, it says it's inspired by Thich Nhat Hanh, but I'd also like to share a few of his own words. I, I've admired this teacher for a long time, but I didn't think of him as being particularly connected with new thoughts. So I was very pleasantly surprised to see his picture on the December issue of Science of Mind magazine. That's their official publication that Annie just read from. So um, he was named by the, the editorial board of that magazine as the spiritual hero of the year. And this is a quote from his memoirs. Every positive experience we live deeply in full awareness is like a wholesome seed planted in our consciousness. We need to practice mindfulness all the time so we can plant healing, positive seeds in ourselves. Then when we need them, they will be able to take care of us. And at the very close of his memoirs, he's, he writes, there's no beginning and no end. I will never die. There will be a dissolution, dissolution of this body, but that does not mean my death. I will continue always. And I think this uh, prayer meditation, which we're about to experience is, you know, bearing that out, that his spirit is still strong. Okay, so it, it, there's, you breathe one time between each part of it. So in, out. Deep, slow. Calm, ease. Smile, release. Serve, open. Present moment. wonderful moment. Present moment. Wonderful moment. And so it is. So again, 
Welcome. So glad to have you here with us this morning. And I want to um, share a little bit about our New Thought Center of Hawaii in case any of you are uh, meeting us for the first time. Um, our mission statement is we're, we're aiming to provide a sanctuary of aloha for the nourishment, development, and evolution of each individual's unique spiritual path. And we uh, evolved from a small religious science church, which was established in uh, Kona in 1971. So we just we're in our second half century. We have held Sunday services continuously from that time. Uh, previously in Keho since 1999 in Kealakekua. And thanks to the pandemic of 2020 and 2021, we have developed the technical skills to hold our services online when necessary, as we are doing today. Um, we are connected to the wider world, primarily through the International New Thought Alliance, which is an umbrella organization. It brings together groups and individuals who share certain common beliefs and attitudes and how it, we got the name New Thought. Uh, Judge Thomas Troward, a very long time ago, coined this phrase, a new thought embodied in consciousness produces a new condition. So that's an empowering thought, which is the basis of new thought. And this alliance includes many unity and uh, religious science and churches, many of which are now called Centers for Spiritual Living. So if you're familiar with any of those, um, it's very close. The philosophical connection is close. You can visit our website to learn more. It's www.NewThoughtCenterOfHawaii.com. Um, now I'm going to ask our musicians for yet another song. Okay, I think we got it. Thank you for your patience with us. Am I on? You are. Okay. I can mute, but I can't unmute. I, well, last time there was a button that came up, and this time it didn't. So I was like, oh, sorry. You'll probably all recognize this song. Um, sing along what you like. Uh, we took a little poetic license. I feel it in my fingers, I feel it in my toes. His love is all around us, and so the feeling grows. It's written in the wind, it's everywhere I go. His spirit's all around us. Help me to let it show. He knows I love him, I always will. My mind's made up by the way that I feel. There's no beginning, there'll be no end. Cause on his love we can depend. I feel his grace before me. As I lay on my bed, I kind of get to thinking of all the things he said. He gave his 
his promise to me. I gave my promise to. I need him up beside me in everything I do. He knows I love him, I always will. My mind's made up by the way that I feel. There's no beginning, there'll be no end. Cause on his love we can depend. It's written in the wind, it's everywhere I go. So if you really love him, come on and let it show. Come on and let it show. Come on and let it show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mahita and Christy. That was another great song. It's time now to introduce our wonderful guest speaker, Susan Bambara. And I'll just tell you a little bit about her. Love is the essential ingredient to all of life, but how does one increase it or find it or manifest it if they are still searching? Susan's presentation is titled, What's Love Got to Do With It? And she'll share some thoughts and ideas on love why it can seem elusive or underwhelming, and how the power of hypnosis and self-hypnosis can increase love within so that one can find it reflected in their lives. Susan is a clinical certified hypnotherapist servicing several exclusive healing retreat centers on the Big Island, along with her private online and in-person sessions. She uses both hypnotic processes and trance, along with her intuitive healing presence, to help people bypass their critical mind in order to manifest their goals for healing, modifying behaviors, change, or resetting the body-mind mechanism for greater focus on clarity on one's highest path and purpose. And if you'd like to learn more about Susan's work, you can visit her at thehypnospa.com or SusanBambara.com. So Susan, we welcome you. We wish we had a lay to give you, a uh, lay of love. We'll just make it uh, virtual for now and welcome. Thank you Amy, for that nice introduction. And thank you to Priscilla and our youth ministers, Mahina and Christy. Thanks so much for making this sacred space. It's always an honor to visit the New Thought and uh, as always, when I come to the New Thought, I think of my first guide and my friend, Dr. Beverly Gard, who used to come here uh, to the New Thought or there because we're not in the place today, which is unfortunate because I miss that beautiful view. But uh, she used to share the esteemed teachings of Jesus and Chirothesia way of life, which was her church that was formed by her teacher, Dr. Jay Bussell in Los Angeles on Normandy, not too far from the Vedanta Center of Hollywood. And healings were, were said to have taken place there, love, love healings, and no money was ever exchanged. It was a very simple and dignified gathering of folks interested in the Essenes and Christ's teachings, along with Advaita Vedanta. So Dr. Bev uh, founded that uh, a way of life, Chirothesia way of life, and uh, those teachings when she was going to and fro the studios because she was known for having been in the uh, many productions, but three of the Three Stooges films. So anyway, um, we were taught this emptying out breath before we would come into our classes or before we go to a service. And it helps to leave everything behind and just come into this space and this sacred envelope of time together so that um, we can uh, be presently present to um, enjoy this time with each other. So this emptying out breath, we do three times. And basically we inhale for uh, seven, hold for three. And then when we exhale for seven, we do it in seven short breaths. So let me show you how it goes. 
<laughs> and literally that seven times we exhale. And then we do an easy breath in between. And we do that seven emptying out breaths three times with an easy breath in between. So on the count of three, let us do this together to empty out everything and become present in the now. One, two, and three. Begin inhaling at your own count of seven. And you'll hold for three. And then empty out for seven. <laughs> Till the stomach has completely exhaled. Take a regular breath. And then again, one more time. A nice deep inhale for seven. Exhale that emptying out breath seven times. <sighs> a regular breath in between. And one last time on your own timing, inhale again for seven and hold. And exhale for seven <laughs> with a regular breath. Good job. Now we can enter into this moment and truly lovingly be, as I like to say, presently present. My talk today is about love and its essentialness to our lives, how to better, better manifest it, and why it's important to dedicate ourselves to having more love in our lives on a daily basis. Love is the essential ingredient to all of life. And St. Augustine said, since love grows within you, so beauty grows, for love is the beauty of the soul. In this month of February, when celebrations of the heart and greeting card expectations are high for perfect desire-filled romantic events, which leave many feeling bereft and lonely. Buddhism teaches us that love is a genuine concern for another person's well-being. If you care about someone, you love them. If someone cares about you, you are loved. This includes an ability to love the self, because from that stems the all ability to genuinely love and appreciate another person. And uh, when we say love the self, we don't mean uh, narcissistic uh, navel gazing as Tony A from Adult Children of Alcoholic once said, it's not that kind of self-love, but a self-care that if you're taken care of, then you're, you're good at being able to be present and help others in those moments. The Hawaiians teach ua ola loko ke aloha, which means love gives life within. So love is imperative to one's physical and mental welfare. And with each day, we get another shot at aloha. Love, it's an inside job. Like happiness, we cannot find it outside of ourselves, any greater than we offer it from within to ourselves and thus honestly and fully to others, right? It starts from inside. And if we're halves looking for another half to make a whole, that's not gonna work. We have to be presently present and whole, happy, joyous, and free within ourselves so that we manifest a reflection of ourselves, not only as, as a love partner, but in our friends and our businesses and everywhere that we go in life. We can do our best to show up and be loving from the inside out. Uh, Mr. Gadatta, he was an Indian guru of non-dualism, said awareness is dynamic. Love is being. Awareness is love in action. By itself, the mind can realize any number of possibilities, but unless they are prompted by love, they're valueless. Love precedes creation. Without it is only chaos. So that's kind of interesting. Love precedes creation. So we have to be loving and living in love and light every day in every way, some way, that is the ultimate goal. Tuned into love or acting as if until it becomes real in every moment, right? Act as if until. That doesn't erase tough times, but because love precedes creation, it helps. It helps us to remember our center and our center is authentically love. 
without love, there's only chaos. And that is certainly what was my experience in my 30s and 40s. I felt like I was wondering and wandering to find and waiting for love to come from out there, not realizing that I had the key the whole time, just by learning to love and approve of myself first, by being gentle with me, by loving and learning to be my own loving parent. A loving parent is a patient is a, pa a person who is patient and helpful. And so I, I'm tasked to be that for myself as well. Well, patient and helpful, which that wasn't that wasn't my tendency. My my inner critical parent is usually the first to criticize and get angry with myself. And it took me a long time to work out of that process of being gentle with me and saying, okay, okay. We made a mistake, we did the best we can, we'll try next time to be better. So learning and, to, and loving uh, to learn to be my own loving parent, a loving adult who is patient and helpful. And as I learn to set good boundaries and get in touch with my feelings and needs and wants, especially when co-creating or participating in activities with others, be it work or volunteerism or play, coming from a place of love in the very first intention, even if I veer off the course, if I remember to get back on the course of love being the first and most divine right action, that's helpful. So self-awareness leads to self-love, which leads to really being able to love others and fully live life itself. So feelings, feelings are a part of love. And getting comfortable with feeling my feelings was uh, one of the hardest pieces of love and growth and my growth process. Uh, and it's still really a work in process for me. I used my perfectionism as a way to fill my internal love deficit. I thought if I was perfect and right and good, that would be enough. But that left space for resentment and overextending myself and not being honest with what I felt and needed and wanted. So learning to love myself, including learning to identify my feelings. And that's a hard road to hoe sometimes. But Dante teaches us that one must learn to discern between love as desire versus the realization of unity beyond the mind, pure mind, if you will. Right, So there's love of another person, there's lustful love, and there's friendship love. And then there's the love of realizing that there's a little piece of God in every one of us. So good or bad, we're tasked to love one another. It's right in a lot of the good books, the honorable big books. The goal is to become one with the pure and simple mind in order to be released of the incessant critical monkey mind or the critical parent, some of us can, can consider that. This is the way to let love into the body and the mind vessel, to be still and know, to regenerate, to heal and balance from the inside out. Mr. Gadata also said, love is will, the will to share your happiness with all, being happy, making happy, this is the rhythm of love. He also was heard to say, I cannot but see you as myself. It is the very nature of love to see no difference. There is no difference between myself and anyone else. Those in this society try to individualize and think of ourselves exclusively as unique parts separate from one another. So in our desire to be individual, we have to remember that we're really all one, right? I and my father are one. There is no separation. We just, for some reason, when we're in the earth plane, really get a, get a kick out of being separate and individual. But uh, I think uh, there's an African saying, it's Ubuntu, and uh, it's, uh, but how can I be happy if others are not? How can I um, live at peace knowing others aren't at peace? or even have a head to lay there, a pillar to lay their head on, right? So this is an important part of love too. When we're feeling so in lack and so without, 
uh, it's a good thing to think about our gratitudes, what we do have, what we can be grateful for. Mr. Gadada was asked, in all the universe, is there one single thing of value? And he answered, yes, the power of love. So some of my thoughts and ideas on love are uh, obviously I look to greater sources than myself. And uh, Advaita Vedanta dis distinguishes, as I mentioned, between real love and attachment, because that's what really desire love is. It's attachment. It's attachment to another person, place, or thing. And Vedanta further proclaims that love is in its true self all-inclusive. So the, the negative half of attachment love, if we're not careful, is it brings exclusion because that strong feeling is directed at just one person. So when we, when we have person love, we have to remember to have self-love and world love, right? Attachment in itself is transitory, it comes and goes. I had a beautiful husband in my life and he passed away. So though he re he's released from the mortal coil and I do believe there is connection, that connection as a human to a human is gone. So all of attachment and all love is transitory. Love is eternal though, and because it's all inclusive and all embracing of both good and bad, good is better. <laughs> Be still and know that. Well, 1 John 4 verses seven and eight, my beloved, let us love one another for love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God or higher power or source, father, mother, all that is. Don't let the word God separate you from a power greater than yourself. That source from which we all came and all return. We know from our religious studies that from the oldest religious texts of the Vedas, which are about over 10,000 years old, there's only 108 left, which is why every bead whether it's a Christian bead or a Buddhist bead, every bead has 108 beads because that's all that remains of those great wise Vedas, Vedas 108 uh, passed down through many sages and spoken of in many ways, including by Jesus the Christ, who shared God is I am, which is a very powerful statement. I am is the building block to all prayer. And yet it's also powerful in many other religions and practices, including Hinduism and the Vedanta, which states Om Tat Sat Om. I am that I am. So we want to be careful when we use I am statements. Uh, we don't want to say I am and add illness or sickness or something because we're calling that in. We're manifest. We're using the building block of I am to create. So we want to create, I'm getting better. I had an opportunity to work on my health, right? It's a, a, my first lessons in metaphysics beyond physical spirituality were to realize and mind my words. The Hindu mystic and guru Ramakrishna said, have love for everyone. No one is other than you. So over and over, we hear this theme that we are one, we are united with each other, though we think we are separate. I am you and you are me, we are one, not separate from the whole. Though we think and perceive this world of separation, it's only an illusion, a false superimposition, superimposition, just like waking, dreaming, and deep sleep are not real, which is the A, U, and M of OM, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And that's the backwards E on the OM signal. But there's also that moon with the little dot, that crescent moon, and that's the fourth. And anywhere you go in India, you see statues with the Om sign because there's waking, dreaming, and deep sleep, which are all false superimpositions of what we think to be real. But once we pass through Om, once we pass by those people into the fourth, that crescent, that's no longer of this world. We're not waking, dreaming, or in deep sleep. We just are not separate from the whole, kind of like a diamond has facets and the facets of the diamond are each of us. We're not separate 
but we think our glint, our facet is different and special. And it is special, but it's, it's not separate. I was uh, taught early on in my metaphysical teachings and studies um, and the trainings with the Essenes that uh, because the words are powerful, as I mentioned, it's important to uh, mind the words as I meant, uh, mentioned before. So I remember my first week in those studies, we were told to go home and see how many times we said, no, can't, won't, don't, shouldn't, right? And uh, I was ultimately taught in hypnosis school, uh, we don't shouldn't on each other. We don't should on each other, right? <laughs> Shitting is a, um, it's kind of like telling other people what to do. And we have to love each other and help each other, and maybe guide each other. But ultimately, each person has free will and they're sovereign to decide what's best for them. So then in another week, uh, I remember we were given the I am and to watch how we used I am with negative things and to, to really watch our words and stick with I am and positive things. The Bible says, and then there was the word. So words are pretty powerful and we need to mind our words and our self-talk and how we speak to the world. Saying I am, as I mentioned, is this powerful building block to speak to the world. I am love. I am light, I am safe, I am feeling better, I am not alone, all is well. I am love, I am loved, I am light. Say it until you believe it. So how, how does one increase love? How can you get what you don't have? Here lies the paradox, which is that opportunity to find love. One must become loving. And that's the paradox. So you have to be loving to find love. And learning that, uh, what you feel, what you need and what you want is part of that process. And as you come to the realization of your small self, then ultimately you come to realize the big self, big S, the all that is. And that, that powerful love and isness part of ourselves, pure love, pure consciousness, a love that surpasses all other types of love right here inside of us. What we seek outside ourselves is what we need from inside of ourselves. So we can keep looking and looking and looking, but until we are giving that to ourselves, we're not gonna find it. I met my husband late in my life. And I remember one of the things I told him was, well, my deal breaker is living off, off grid in the jungle. I have to have a hot bath. I have to have an Epsom salt bath. It's something I need in my life on a regular basis. It's how I chill. And he built me a bathtub out in the jungle, which was very sweet and nice. But then what was really amazing was sometimes I'd come home and he'd say, I'm making you a bath. You need an Epsom salt bath. I think it'll make you feel better. So by setting that boundary myself in my life, I manifested someone in my life who helped me to keep that boundary. So it's about finding the self to find a reflective self outside of you if you're still looking for that kind of physical love, an attachment that becomes interdependent, not codependent. I was blessed throughout my years with him and I'm grateful to be able to share some of those things with him. As human beings, we seek to feel safe, loved no matter what and attached but these all can and must be found within ourselves in order to experience that outside of ourselves and to ultimately let go of attachments, to be able to just observe like, oh, isn't that interesting? Everything is not working. Oh, isn't that interesting? Everything is working. Yay. It's more about just enjoying life on life's terms. The secret to finding love is an inside job. Love creates more love. Feelings of lack create lack. So we're tasked to list and feel grateful and thankful for what we do have. And I do that daily. I have a daily gratitude list and I add, it, add to it. And I actually have one that I've been accumulating from the time ever I was young, thinking of all the magical times that I made stupid mistakes, but somehow something greater than me saved me. And that's... Um, 
demonstrations of higher power that I, I'm grateful for now. So uh, daily gratitude lists, meditation uh, can help us to heal patterns within that created our discontent and not having love within by seeking it outside ourselves. The media and the world outside teaches us to seek love uh, out of things. If we have a better car, better underwear, tighter underwear, better makeup, better performance, more money, then, 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 then we'll be happy. This is an unending cycle that does not lead to love or satisfaction of any lasting type. So this is kind of where my piece about hypnosis comes in. We can use hypnosis to help us change our mind patterns and thoughts to practice learning how to meditate until we really can meditate. The only difference with hypnosis is we add a suggestion piece as well, where not only do we get you into a relaxed state, but then we add suggestions to help you to help yourself. And uh, self-hypnosis is very really good for that as well. I teach all my clients who want to do that self-hypnosis. Adult children of alcoholic or dysfunctional families can help us understand and heal our childhood traumas or confusions or whatever forms of shame, pain, fear, and abandonment that we experienced as children. And we're somehow subconsciously recreating it over and over in our love and friendship or work relationships. So we need to heal that because insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Keep hooking up with an alcoholic personality that doesn't love themselves and expecting them to love us. Why are we surprised and they cannot? And that's our default because we're trying to fix some sort of home initial default programming. And so there are programs that help with that as well. You don't only have to have hypnosis, but it's the way I found peace. Forgiveness is accepting that I cannot change the past. We need heart healing for heart health. And one way to start learning how to open our heart is to pause, be still, make thine eye be single and listen, right? It's in, it's in the sacred texts, be still and know. It's in all the other books too, in different forms of words. What is it that you seek from love from another? You know, that's a good question because, again, it's that outside, like, oh, when I get married, you know, I wasted my 20s, my 30s, and my 40s wondering when love would come and didn't enjoy my life as a filmmaker or anything else. Anything I did, I was always thinking, oh, if I only had a love. Well, love came late for me and it was great, but I now see that I would have had a greater life if I would have just enjoyed what I had in the moment and trusted and had faith that human love would come when the time was right. Are you giving or able to give what you're seeking to yourself? That's an important question, right? We cannot be, as I mentioned, a half seeking another half to become whole. We need to be whole in the first place and find out how to do that so that we can find another to love and be loved by and we create a, a, a greatness together, not a codependent dysfunction. We will always find our reflection at the exact same amount of love and care that we give ourselves and that we give out. If we have a clear understanding of our boundaries, what we feel and need and want, we're able to communicate that clearly. We don't feel like living in lack until we need a companion and we have the patience to live fully with love. So it's not about thinking, oh, I don't have something until I have it. It's about living with what you have and being grateful for it. So why can love seem elusive or underwhelming, especially when we find it? Ah, oh, surprise, it's really hard. That's what I found out at 50. Being married to somebody else after many years of being on my own, that's a compromise, that's an adjustment. When I committed to figuring out how to love myself and how to have good self-care, then I found human love with another person. But I already had a happier life and it just got better. I used the power of self-hypnosis and hypnosis work to help myself and others to create love within order to find it reflected outside in the world around. 
And for the past many months, since my husband passed on earth from this plane, I use hypnosis and self-hypnosis to help me to heal and comfort myself. The Dalai Lama said, love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, we can't survive. And so that includes love and compassion for ourselves too, being gentle with ourselves when we're not living up to the muster we think we should be. I teach my clients and the doctor's patients who come to me to see uh, me for sessions or online. I teach the both self-hypnosis and meditation as needed. And today, I want to show you a heart-centered self-hypnosis process that we can do together. And you can repeat on your own as a quick daily meditation process to tune into your heart space if you'd like, whenever you'd like. Okay? So let's get comfortable. Inhale the present. Exhale the past. As Rumi said, close your eyes. Fall in love. Stay there. Inhale the present. Exhale the past and focus into this moment. Feel your shoulders relax and shut down your eyes if you'd like to completely for this little time that we do this. Focus in on your heart space where all love resides. Notice it and then notice it expanding and getting more radiantly beautiful and color filled with every easy breath you take. Just let yourself relax, relax for this little time we do this. Imagine great white light pouring into your for to upper head, into your body, and coming down and rooting you down so that your feet, it's going down into earth like roots. So this one line of white light is filling you from top to bottom, and now your heart is radiating that beautiful color and light in that heart space. And imagine that heart space filling you up completely. So you're so filled up with light that then there's enough and to spare that comes out of your hands and your feet and your heart and to share with others. And imagine it's going to the person or people next to you or in your home and then the homes near you and down the road. So it's filling up your whole town and then imagine it filling up your whole here on the island space or where you're at. And then see it's getting bigger and bigger until that light connects and covers the entire round of the earth. See it with every easy breath, getting that color of love brighter and brighter. And now in a moment, not right now, but when I count to three, Send a wave of relaxation from the top of your head down to the tip of your toes. One, two, three. Send that wave down, down, down. Good, imagine that light flowing down from the top of your head through your body, grounding to the earth, breathing in the present and exhaling the past. With every exhalation, any darkness, any doubt, it's being spit out. What do you know that's true? Keep that. What do you know that's not true? Let that go. Love is the most beautiful of all human emotions. Let that love fill your heart now. And then your entire body. As you continue to breathe in more light, and exhale any darkness in the body, mind, or spirit from this life or any other. Good. Now, on the next count of three, do not open your eyes until this sense of love is thoroughly anchored into your heart for the rest of today and tonight to allow yourself to sleep deep tonight and wake in the morning feeling lighter, brighter, Rested, refreshed, and loved deeply, more so from within. So here we go. When you're ready, do not open your eyes until this is instilled. One, two, three. Good job. You don't need deep trance to gain therapeutic benefits. 
we can feel love by imagining it. Let yourself use your imagination to get in touch with what feels like love inside of you. So in summary, love is truly the key ingredient to everything in life. It's the antidote that the world needs now. And as my grandma used to say, she passed just this past September at 103. <laughs> and she used to say today, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. So this is why I teach self-hypnosis to people and why I do help, uh, I do help, excuse me, I do self-hypnosis and hypnosis sessions. And I make recordings for people as well so that I can help them to manifest love from the inside out or change things, as was mentioned, of course. But the ultimate goal is to find love because th that helps change any negative behavior. So this is your opportunity to consciously guide yourself into peace. And within peace, you can find love and renew the self from the inside out. The only way to end fear is to let love in. So I'm gonna leave you with a final Lakota proverb that says inner peace and love are the greatest of God's gifts. And as the great Ojibwe prayer says, teach us love, compassion, and honor that we may heal the earth and heal each other, right? Bupono, make right more right. Be determined to do this in your daily life. So you can contact me by my website if you'd like to learn self-hypnosis or experience change work through the power of hypnosis. We are looking at a date with the new thought to see about offering a Zoom self-hypnosis seminar to be taught over two Saturdays for a couple hours in the near future. And I wanna thank you each and all for letting me share with you today about my thoughts of love the power of love and the power of hypnosis. The God within you and I are blessed and the God within me salutes and blesses the God within you. Namaste. Wow. <laughs> that was wonderful. What a gift, Susan. Thank you so much. It's so perfect leading into Valentine's Day. Well, uh, the, the next thing that uh, it, we have uh, on our program is um, some more heart opening music. And um, if it feels right, it could also be wallet opening music because we uh, it's the time in our regular service when we're meeting at New Thought when we pass our COA bowl. So, so we have a virtual lay, you know, we have also a virtual uh, koa bowl. Um, and uh, I'm going to be asking uh, Mahina and Christy to gift us with some with their music. And after they are well started on that, I'll briefly put up a screen share explaining how you can make a donation when there isn't the, the physical koa bowl. There's several ways. But I will let them start their singing first before I do that. Okay, are we, can you hear us? Very good.
Thank you so much, Mahina and Christy. Another wonderful song. Appreciate it so much. I'm going to now read some announcements, um, some activities and events that are coming up at New Thought Center for Hawaii uh, for February and also into March. Um, first of all, our Sunday services, as you probably all know, are online only um, for the duration of February. And you can always check our website for the New Thought Center of Hawaii YouTube, YouTube link. And the pre-recorded video will premiere Sunday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time and will remain available afterwards. And our last Sunday of the month, we'll get together by Zoom. So that'll be really great to see everybody. The next three Sundays, we've got some great speakers and musicians coming up. Uh, next Sunday, uh, the uh, after today, next Sunday, the 20th, will be Linda Boozer. And her program will be about empathy, compassion, and a heart of joy. And we're very excited that Lara Prince will be providing music for us. Then on the 27th of February, we have our annual membership meeting. And that'll be via interactive Zoom. And the music will be by Lori Callis. It's going to be wonderful. And then starting in March, uh, March 6th, we've got Raina Lombard. And her program will be about trusting your intuition, your self-care superpower to heal, balance, and transform your life. Um, our monthly events, unfortunately, are canceled for February due to Omicron. Uh, the first Sunday of the month, we normally have our crystal bowl meditation at 9 a.m. Hopefully it will come back soon. And then our last Sunday of the month is our produce giveaway after our service. And we're looking forward to that returning as well. Um, if you want to become a member of New Thought, you can download a copy of the application from our website, which is www.newthoughtcenterofhawaii.com. And the completed forms can be submitted by email or postal mail. And then our new members will be recognized at the annual meeting. So it's not too late if you wanna become a member. Uh, before the 27th, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, we do have some service opportunities still available. Uh, we have volunteers that are needed for the 50th Jubilee planning group, and it's not too late because our celebration will extend well into 2022. And we also are looking for a person to maintain our Facebook page for New Thought Center of Hawaii. And another wonderful opportunity is to volunteer to serve on the board of trustees starting in March. And if you're interested, you can send an email to spiritof at newthoughtcenterofhawaii.com. And you can also click reply on your weekly newsletter. So we've got a lot of great things coming up. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Mahina and Christy for our closing song, Hawaii Aloha. Everybody sing along in your kitchens, your living rooms, your cars wherever you happen to be. And we're looking forward to hearing the song from Mahina and Christy. <laughs> <laughs> 